Mother, it's Jane. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I want to share with you some different alcohol ink techniques as well as my first um, time using the Tim Holtz new distress embossing glazes which are transparent which are amazing. So I have about four or five cards to show you, to share with you using the new alcohol ink technique that I have been playing with, as well as a couple of cards with the old drop and move around technique. So let's get into it. I also have a couple of five by seven cards to share with you as well. So here you go. So I was in the process of making some cards and I realized that I needed to stop and film these for you. So that is why my work surface is absolutely filthy. Tim Holtz just came out with 15 new alcohol ink colors and I bought all 15 and they're very bright and vibrant. You'll also notice here that I have some of them that I've been using and the lids are not on them. Well, I found out from Tim that you do not need to put the lid on while you use your alcohol inks. They are designed so they do not evaporate. A little bead of liquid stays up in that neck. So when I learned that, it made my life so much easier, including the blending solution. You do not need to put the lid on because I was wasting so much time taking the lid off, putting the lid on. So I was so happy to learn that from Tim. So this is how I swatch my inks. I just drop a blob on the, a piece of Yupo cardstock. Yupo is really just plastic. And then what I do is I take my one inch circle punch and I punch out a swatch. And this is how I keep my swatches. This is um, glued onto some Nina 110 pound cardstock. I'm not really neat about it because my fingers are usually all inky as you can see right here. And I just want to get a rough idea of the colors when I go to grab them. And I'm not that concerned about keeping everything in color order. It's more or less just whatever is in front of me. Because Tim's always adding new colors. I don't want to have to keep rearranging my swatches to keep them in rainbow order. This is one of the backgrounds that I made while I was off camera. Um, I will show you how I do similar backgrounds. This is with the bright um, out, new bright alcohol inks from Tim. And that gold is a pinata brass. Um, but I will show you that in just a second. So I have these little jello shot cups and I have this 99% alcohol as well as the, these pipettes. And I will link all the products down below. Um, actually, go to my blog post. That's where they'll all be linked. There's not too many in YouTube. YouTube doesn't allow me to link everything. So I have poured some of the alcohol into a cup and I have a fine tip brush and I just wanted to show you how I finish a lot of my cards I like control a little bit of control so I'm just dotting with my brush dipping it into that alcohol just tiny little dots and I'm trying to follow where colors meet other colors or where there's a vein or where it's a little bit darker and you could you can see just a tiny little bit of alcohol expands that dot and I just let it flow and do its own thing now I do I have been making cards with a hair dryer and I will link the hair dryer that I love and if you don't want it to spread if you want a little tiny dot just do a dot and give it a dry and it will stop it from spreading but as you can see I'm trying to follow the veining of the different inks now, Ranger also came out with some alloys, which are not like a mixative. It sits more on top, does not mix in, which I'll explain in a minute as well. So this is with some of the new colors. You can see I have a big glump of green on the edge. This is the one that I use the blow dryer with and trying to get the wispy look. And this is where I use the pinata brass. This is one color of ink. You can look at the difference in shading you get with just one color of ink. I think it's amazing. So here's the new Tim Holtz alloys. Um, there's gold, silver, statue, uh, br um, coppery looking. They're very, very cool. And I can't wait to play with all of them. I did get to play with one today. I did swatch them. I put a big 
glop on a, and then held my cardstock down and let it all run just so I get a rough idea of what it looks like in its thick state and its thin state. So let me just show you what I did and how I made these backgrounds. So this particular one here is eggplant ink and pinata brass and this eggplant alcohol ink gets the blues and the purples and the pinks. Everything is done with Upo paper and Tim Holtz has this really new alcohol ink blower um, rather than blowing with a straw and it's really easy to pump. It does not hurt your hand. My old hands could not handle that. This is a hair dryer. It has a high and a low setting. I use the low and here's the eggplant um, ink. So I'm taking it full strength and applying it directly to the cardstock and after I did that I realized I wasn't supposed to do that. Because what I want to do is I want to put some of that alcohol ink in a cup and add the alcohol. And when the alcohol evaporates, don't throw the cup away. You can always add more 99% alcohol in there and reactivate the eggplant or whatever colors already in there. The reason you put the 99% alcohol in there, it makes it a little more runny and you have a little more control, actually less control, but it flows easier when you're using your hair dryer. So this is a clean pipette and I'm dipping it into just the plain alcohol. And you can see how it, the blue has come out of that eggplant. So I'm going to show you the whole background but I'm going to speed this up because otherwise you'd be falling asleep. It didn't really take that long, maybe 10 minutes, but I'm going to speed it up for you so that you're not sitting here getting bored. But I put down a little bit of alcohol and then, I mean, eggplant with the alcohol and a little bit more alcohol that I blow it out like a hairdresser. I also been using the Tim Holtz blower, which I really like. And this, this technique, I'm finding it very, very artistic and I have a little more control over it. I'm trying to get the different color variations to come out. The beauty about alcohol inks is if you don't like it, just keep playing with it and adding more color and you will eventually get something that you like. Now these are five by seven sheets of Upo. I've also been experimenting with the eight by 10 and cutting out pieces that I like. And one thing we're trying to do here is to see, to get the veining. If you think of a mine and the veins, um, is to have the, the darker color up against the lighter color so you have a little bit more interest. One thing I'm going to be practicing on trying to do in the future is not to get it so close to the edge. I like to keep it away from the edge and just have the design more in the middle. But I think I probably need a little bit bigger piece of cardstock for that. But as you can see, I'm just dropping down the eggplant, which is mixed with the alcohol, with the pipette, adding a little more alcohol, and just kind of moving it around and looking at one section after another. I'm keeping it on my work surface, so when the ink runs to the edge, it kind of pulls on the edge. If I pull it off of the work surface and let it drip off, I won't have that pulling like you can see in that bottom right hand corner. I won't have that pulling if I hold it up and let it all just blow off the edge. The blues and the pinks and the purples are absolutely amazing and it amazes me how you can get one color, well, I mean different colors out of one ink. Um, I was going to use the um, silver, I decided to use the alloy, the Tim Hoyt's gilded alloy here. And so what I'm doing, I'm zoomed in a little bit, where the veining is, I added some purple and I added some alcohol and I wanted to add two drops of the gilded and I ended up adding four, which was a little bit too much. I did not mean to add so many. It kind of fell out. I like the end result, but in the future, I will try not to use as much gold. So I'm using the ink blower of Tim Holtz, adding more alcohol, trying to move that around the goal again being trying to catch it in the veining and I keep blowing my cardstock across the table here. 
just moving it around trying to get it spread out a little bit trying to get it together a little bit if that's what I'm trying to look at now this was done with the pinata brass and I will give you a side-by-side -side comparison here in just a second Tim Holtz allies blend a little bit more they group together where the pinata tends to separate you see the pinata on the right it looks a little more pixelated and it sits more on top you can actually feel it raised where the alloy is the same as the alcohol ink I'm not saying I like one over the other I just wanted to show you the difference between the two the alloys I mean the um, pinata on the right seems to have a little more shine but that's totally up to you on how you want to do it now this is the eggplant and I started out with the Tim Holtz blending solution and the purpose of that is to get your inks moving around I'm using all of the bright colors from the new alcohol inks and I did not think that as I was doing this these colors were going to make the color of mud so this is a classic example of if you don't like it just keep on going with it so I'm using the Tim Holtz hand blower here I really like the way it's working out I'm adding drops of 99% alcohol to get it kind of moving around feel like I'm frying an egg here adding some more pinks trying to get rid of the browns that I feel like I am making and this is one thing I love to do is I love to hold it sideways and let it drip down and then kind of move it now one thing you can do is alcohol inks tend to keep on going until they're dry so if you like something you keep you just get your blow dryer out and you dry it with your blow dryer a heat tool is a little too hot for this so what I'm doing here is I just added some of the alloy and then I added some drops of alcohol I'm just kind of dipping my paintbrush in and splattering in like you would paint on a card or anything like that and as I said I don't want it to blend out too much so now I'm getting my hair dryer out and drying it and there's no rhyme or reason to this there's no right or wrong there is no two cards the same as many times as I tried to duplicate it it's been almost impossible so now I'm going to make one out of the background out of the blues that were all the blues that were in this new um, alcohol ink this is the cobalt I don't sorry don't know the name of the first one and I'm using the blues because I did not want to make mud again this time this is mermaid Did not put any blending solution on it or anything yet I'm getting my little mini ink applicators with the felt and I'm going to put some blending solution on top of that and there's the felt and I'm going to pounce on it and move it around the old-fashioned way without the hair dryer and without the blower this is the fastest way in my humble opinion on to make alcohol ink backgrounds because I let it dry a little bit after I laid it down that's why there's big um, deeper areas of color which I really do like and I probably would have left it the way it is but for the sake of the video I wanted to just kind of move around here but I'm just sprinkling some more of the color down pouncing more of the color getting more of a marbled look here with some pockets of deeper color it's nice to have some of the whiter the white areas showing if you want to since these are five by seven I do cut them down to make four and a quarter by five and a half inch cards but as I said earlier I did keep some of them and make five by seven cards which I think they came out really great I'm drying it now to stop the movement I do not want it to move anymore I want to keep it just the way it is I was really happy with how it was all coming together and I decided that I wanted to do that paintbrush again and to add the little white dots along the veining and I really think that this just adds so much interest to the character of the card and you can see the dot on the middle there from middle to left 
is bigger than the one on the left of that because I started with more alcohol on my brush and as I dropped it down there's less less and less which I just love the way that looks you just keep playing around till you're done and tired of the whole thing and set it aside to dry and then you move on and let me talk about the distress um, glazes they're coming up right now these are like an embossing powder they came out with 12 colors but they are translucent and the color after it's been embossed say so i took white cardstock and i put spun sugar on one vintage photo on the other i think it was vintage photo what did it say and um i sprinkled it with water just like just like a, it's a it's distress oxide like you do any distress oxide there's an embossing dabber and this is my swatching this is how I swatched it so I start at the bottom and I kind of go up and I did it a couple of times you need to get this dabber working on a plain piece of paper before you start and these are the 12 different colors and as I said they're translucent so if you can see I'll point out to you you can actually see through it and see where I have water droplets underneath the embossing the distress glaze I keep calling it embossing powder it's not really it is but it's not it's very shiny and it's very cool and it looks totally different depending on what color you put it on so I'm going to play with that today so I'm starting out with this Simon Says Stamp good reading background which I absolutely love for a lot of my backgrounds I'm taking this green stamping it with Versamar ink Versa mark ink I did um, put the anti-static powder on top first heavily and I'm trying to figure out what color do I want to put on this and so I decided to do the vintage photo so I'm sprinkling it all over now you need to have your heat tool good and hot before you bring it to this and you need to keep it moving otherwise you will melt the paper it is plastic and I did get a little curling in this so I have to really adhere it down to my card now you really can't tell that's distress glaze and this is the impression obsession palm leaves so this is after I distressed it and do you see how the dots show through on that embossing glaze that I really really like so you have the blue flower leaves on the top and the background underneath and it really gives it some really great definition and I'm sorry I'm buzzing through this so fast this is such a long video just give it a go and experiment with it and try it out I have a lot of cover plates that I in my in my stash so I cut three of these out and I glued them all together with lawn fawn liquid glue it is my favorite glue and I just kind of put dots, dots around the edges and some strategic dots in the middle just depending on where it was I did not cover every inch of this background and I encourage you to get the distress glazes and give them a try just experiment like I did here today so I stack three together and I'm going to put glue on the back of these but then I take my finger and I pounce it on my glue dots because I don't want it seeping out when I put it on top of my background so figure out where of your background you want to put it glue, adhere it down and then put something heavy on your phone your misty your whatever the stamp market hay dye is one of my favorites so I cut out a white and I cut one out of the blue glitter cardstock now I'm trimming really close my scissors are at a little bit of an angle towards the die cut and save all of your scraps because then you can make cards out of your scraps so I swatch all of my card stocks I got the idea from Jennifer McGuire and I have a video and I'll link it below on how to go ahead and do that and so rather than going to my wall looking for card stock I go to my ring and then I pick the card stock that I want so I really like this Blue Lagoon, Lagoon by Gina K. and because my fingers are so inky I got ink on this and this mono sandy racer is amazing for that 
I did put a little piece of white cardstock on the inside so that you have a way to write your message. And I got this Mama Elephant Hello Friend, made a little sentiment strip, and put that down below. This is the one where I use that back from Simon Says Stamp. This is Simon Says Stamp's Big Happy die set. I have the shadow with vellum and the top with gold glitter. I have a lot of colored felt, felt foam in my stash, so I've been trying to use it up. So I figured this green would be pretty good for behind this card. And I use some heavy, um, heavy duty sticking tape to keep this stuck down because it was so warped. Simon Says Stamp has these great toner sentiments. I went ahead and cut mine all up. And because they're toner, you can go ahead and foil them, but I decided not to. And here is my completed happy card, and I also stamped the inside of the card. So this is one of the backgrounds that I made with the, with the um, hair dryer. And this is the Stamp Market Great Big Hello. It is one of my favorite dyes of all time. I also grabbed the Simon Says Stamp A7 Thin Frames and I cut three frames out and I used this Winter Wonderland Mirror cardstock and I glued together two hellos with the, with, the, with the blue on top and I also made three of the frames and I love how the frame really brings in the card and makes that hello so it's not like floating all by itself. These are the little things raindrops and they add just the right finishing touch to this card. This particular card I use the paper tray ink Mighty Bloom. I glued three together and I just I put this on top and I just adore this card. So I think it's my favorite of all the cards. So I needed to put a sentiment on there, but I didn't, I want it to be simple. So when you have a new stamp, rub it with your fingers so it, it, it actually works. I'm using Brutus Monroe Gilded Powder on a piece of Ellen Hudson 40 pound vellum. I did use my embossing bag before. Sprinkling that on there, and I'm going to get my heat gun really good and hot, melt that embossing powder, and then I will trim this down. I still love to watch embossing powder melt. And then I fold it over the edges, and then I adhere this to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, and I'll show you all the cards at the end. This particular background, I use the Simon Says Stamp Wonky, Wonky Rectangle. I use it a lot because I just love the little detail on the edge. I adhered it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card with the MFT Stamps Smile Die. Again, I go to my ring to see what color. And I layered three. I put two, um, two lavenders and then one white. So when you turn it to the side, it does show, but I forgot to show it to you. I have my T ruler here. This is my negative space. I'm taping it down because I want to make sure that I can get my smile straight. So I glue all of my letters in. And you have to be quick here because sometimes the glue squeezes out and then you're gluing the negative space. So you're just putting all of your dies in there and then when you remove your negative space, you go slow and you be very careful I use my, I call it a pointer tool, I don't even know what you call it, um, to lift it up because I don't want to wait till it dries completely. Again, as I said, it might adhere the negative space, so I'm kind of poking it down, holding it down, making sure that it all is stuck down before I start peeling it up. And there you go. I always put something heavy. I have these clear blocks, so I use those. So with this background, this is one of my favorite stamp sets. It's Gina K. Have Faith, and I use Lawn Fawn Pearlescent Vellum. And I just stamped onto the vellum using my anti-static powder tool and my Versamark ink. 
and I'm just going to fold this over on the card, figuring out where I want it to be. I'm using my grid mat. This is my glass media mat to line it all up to make sure that everything is straight. I'm going to stick down one side, turn it over to make sure that my sentiment is centered, and then line it all up and fold over the other side. And I'm going to put this on a five by seven card base. And it is absolutely stunning in real life. I wish you guys could see these in real life. I'm sorry that you can't. It saddens me. Anyhow, um, as things are drying, I go to the next and I come back and do my embellishments. So I did the Little Things pearls on this smile card and they came out really great. I decided not to do anything with this card. I am going to figure out what I want to do with this at a future date. So let's take a look at everything. This is the one with the text, with the embossing glaze, the happy. This is that cover plate. I put the little dots on with the little tiny brush. I just love the way that looks. This is the paper tray, Mighty Bloom, with the wrap sentiment. This is a five by seven with those Simon Says Stamp A7 frames. This is with all the new alcohol inks, the bright, bright colors. And this is the one, just the eggplant alcohol ink that I used, and I used the hair dryer. So thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I just encourage you to give these cards a try. They really are not that difficult. Thanks.